This is a Saturday morning TV log from Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Welcome to another Saturday morning TV log, and this time around it's CBS Story Bread, brought to us by Southern Star, aka Hambar Bear Australia, and CBS Entertainment Productions. Greetings, my fellow YouTubers. I'm Duel, the Big D to you. This is Big D's Entertainment Saturday, well, Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. Sorry, I got a little. I tracked again. Well, so this week's Saturday Morning TV Log is a show I grew up with in the 80s, CBS Story Break. A Saturday Morning Anthology television series that originally aired on the CBS network. It started as a mid-season replacement in March of 1985. <coughs> and ran for an overall total of three seasons until January of 1989. Now, this, of course, was another attempt to try and bring in some more stories to the Saturday morning scene, which ABC had already been doing with their weekend specials, which I have yet to talk about that show. I know this isn't the first time they've done something like this. I know they've done some others, but I don't think they aired on Saturday morning, so. Anyway... The show was originally hosted by Bob Keeshan, who you may remember best as the original Captain Kangaroo, from which that show had just been canceled the previous year. So he returned after Captain Kangaroo had been canceled for a little over a half a year and grew out of a feature on the series. Each episode is a half-hour anime adaptation of various children's books published at the time of the airing. Anyway, after it ended, the show had come to an end. However, in, 1993, in the 1993 season, it would return in reruns, and this time have, hosts, have a host in Malcolm Jamal Warner, who you may remember as Theo from The Cosby Show, and before he returned in Malcolm and Eddie. Now, unique for an American TV series, the series featured open captions captioned by the National Captioning Institute for the hearing impaired during its re-airings in the 90s. Instead of the usual closed captioning, in addition to being a convenience for the hearing impaired, this allowed those who could hear to read along with the story. All episodes were produced by Southern Star Hanna Barbera Australia, who had recently already worked on our show, well, well, they who had recently worked on this the nineteen eighty CBS series Drag Pack. After this, they would work on the Berenstein Bears, which would debut later that same year, and and the Teen Wolf animated series, which would debut the following year. <coughs> and one of the crew members of the series was Sander Schwartz, who would later go on to become the president of Warner Brothers Animation. Anyway, it was also CBS's first in-house cartoon series since their original Terry Tunes from long ago. It got nominated for an Emmy for Outstanding Anime Program in its first season. Now, after its run in 1989, it continued to repeat until 1991, then returned later, well, two years later with Malcolm Jamal Warren. The series featured regular Read More About It project selections from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. that were highlighted at the end of the, of the show by both hosts. Now then, there have been numerous stories that have been released. Now, among some of the ones that I'm mostly familiar with have included Ye Shin, a Cinderella story from China, How to Eat Fried Worms, and chocolate fever. There'd also be some other stories. The first one he actually had was the Great Ringtail Garbage Caper. There was also some other stories, including Dragon's Blood, Arnold of the Ducks, um, Harry the Fat Bear Spy, the Roquefort Gang, the Monsters Ring, and a host of others. Oh. There was even Raggedy Ann and Andy and the Camel with the Wrinkled Knees. Which, of course, the fault, which, if I'm not mistaken, no, was it the fault? No, no, it was. No, this was kind of a factual lead-in to the um, 
Adventures of Raggedy Ann in the indie series, which debuted in 1988. And that was about the time they actually had this one. Anyway, the show got shown internationally in Australia and Singapore. There would be an overall total of 26 episodes produced and aired. Afterwards, the show has not been seen again after, <coughs> after it was last run in 1998. Now, I will tell you that I had a lot of fun with CBS Story Break. It is really a fun show, and I, I really thought it had a lot of potential, aside from the ABC Weekend Specials, which mostly were anime and live action, but however, CBS Story Break was not. I think... You'll really like the show if you give it a try. It is a pretty good series. You can find some episodes of it on YouTube. You can find a few episodes, as a matter of fact. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, you can, find, you can find a few episodes here on YouTube if you would like to see the show. Mostly it will probably be from the original run with Bob Keishan. Hey, I'm cool with that. But anyway. It also got released on video cassette as, well, video story break in 1992. Where even after the show had just ended in reruns. And before it even came back. Yeah, just trying to have one last glance. Well, there's so much to show and what have you. Okay, let me give you an example of some of the ones you can find. But I'll have to give them to you for, well, pictures. Not from freeze frame, so. Here's a look at the, the VO cassette release of How I Eat Fried Worms. Which I definitely remember this one. I don't seem to remember seeing that live action film that, that was released by New Line Cinema years later. I'm sorry I have to give you a better good look at this. This is a picture shot for klutz. Sorry, everyone. I was trying to get the pause button to go on. I apologize for showing myself. I show my, uh, you know what I'm trying to say. Here's a look at um, the one, the video release for Chocolate Fever. I had the book of that. And here's a little bit of a promotional type picture for Dragon's Blood. And here's another video release. This is a Arnold of the Ducks. And here's an actual promotion picture for CBS Story Break. As you can see in the middle, there's a picture of Bob Keishan, the original host. Plus, um, a look at some of the, well, characters you can find from the other books based, um, anime films you can see on the show anyway as i've said before you can find you can find various episodes of it on youtube so i can see you can find several of them you can find chocolate fever klutz um let's see um and i believe you can find um dragon's blood and yeshin plus a lot of other Anyway, I really think CBS Story Break is such an amazing series. I think your kids will really like it. This is a series I would recommend you give a watch and what have you. If you can't find much of it on YouTube, no problem. Just try and find somewhere else. But anyway, CBS Story Break, it's really good. And I really enjoyed it for what it had to offer. So that's going to do it for this Saturday Morning TV. Well, what did you think of CBS Story Break? Did you... Which... Did you ever grow up watching this in the 80s with Bob Keishan? Or did you see the reruns with Malcolm Jamal Warren? Well, I actually got to watch both versions. Even though they had the same stories, but different hosts. Anyway, let me know what you thought about CBS Story Break in the comments section below. If you liked the video, click the like button. 
please feel free to subscribe as well. Be a part of the Big D Nation. And later tonight, for realsies, you're going to get my review of Wish. I hope. So, if you enjoyed this, consider checking out my Saturday morning TV logs for, well, some of these other shows that CBS had on at the time this came out. In the upper left-hand corner is the Saturday morning TV log I did for their long-running head Muppet Babies. The upper right-hand corner is the Saturday morning TV log I did for another show that premiered the same during the same year this came out, the 1984-85 season, that was the short-lived but underrated pole position. Or if you'd like another show with variety, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see the Saturday morning TV log I did for 1976's The Croft Super Show. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe if you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., as well as the Saturday morning TV log, then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching, and next week's Saturday morning TV log is The Flintstone Kids. So until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.